brother! Huh? Man, is it a little dark in here? Lumos. Ah, that's better. Man, I hope you guys have got your wands ready. Personally, I got four. But there is a new Fantastic Beast and where to find them in the Crimes of Grindelwald trailer, and there is a lot to discuss. Including the potential reveal that Credence is a Lestrange? Hey, you know what else is fantastic? The feeling you get when you click that subscribe button, am I right? <laughs> I'd say it's downright magical. Guys, we have been digging through this trailer a lot today. So now we want to run down our top five takeaways, starting with number five, the return to Hogwarts. Woo! Just look at that amazing drone footage. I tell you, they must have really good technology to pick up these magically concealed places like that. It's hard not to get chills, right? When you return to Hogwarts at long last. Although I do have to say, are they, uh, Operating here? Because uh, you know you can't do that, right? It says so in Hogwarts history, at least according to Hermione, who makes it sound like it's in bold face print on every single page. It also apparently totally fails to mention the sorting hat at all, but whatever, you can click the card to see where that's relevant. Either way, these students seem very interested in these unusual visitors who are there to visit a young Dumbledore in his office, which just so happens to be in the old Defense Against the Dark Arts room, or I guess new Defense Against the Dark Arts. He's teaching Transfiguration at the time, but he's in that room? I don't know. You really would have thought they'd have redecorated that room between Dumbledore and Lockhart teaching there though, wouldn't you? But I guess not. But I suppose it is worth noting Dumbledore did move a few of his possessions to the headmaster's office when he did finally get that sweet, sweet promotion. I do wonder how long it took him to decide where to place that cool tower thing. I mean, we all know Dumbledore's real contribution to the wizarding world is in the field of wizarding feng shui. I do love knitting patterns. Oddly, as cool as it was to see the old sets, the thing it made me most concerned about was, like, I don't consider the Harry Potter movies canon, but I do consider the Fantastic Beasts canon, and now they're sharing sets, so... Uh... Number four, the Fantastic Beasts themselves. For as much as this movie appears to be about Dumbledore and Grindelwald and the Deathly Hallows, it is easy to forget that the title is Fantastic Beasts and that they will obviously play a large role. Although I don't think anyone's arguing that Eddie Redmayne and Jude Law are Fantastic Beasts, am I right? <laughs> there are a couple of old favorites, including Pickett the Bowtruckle and the always trustworthy Thestrals, which appear to be transporting Grindelwald? I'm guessing this is Makuza moving him to somewhere else. I mean, obviously it's somewhere else, and I just like taking him out for a carriage ride around the castle. I'm curious if the people following him on Broomstick are there to break him out or are part of the escort, but either way, we know he's going to break out eventually. That weird skeleton from the Defense Against the Dark Arts slash Transfiguration Room is a Diracall skeleton. Probably not relevant to the plot, but I thought it was interesting because this is the Wizarding World's explanation for the missing dodo birds. We muggles think they're extinct, but wizards know better. Actually, they're just flightless birds who can poof away whenever they want to, so we just don't ever see them now. This hilarious looking bird appears to be a fwooper. They lay brilliantly patterned eggs and their song will eventually drive the owner crazy, so they actually have to be sold to you with a silencing charm on them. And speaking of driving people mad, I have no idea what this antlered fellow is next to Jacob. There's nothing in this book that matches the description at all, although I do have to say his horns do look a little crumpled if you see where the snorkack I'm going. By the way, where are they in this scene? I mean, it looks like it's raining out this window and like they're inside of a bubble in this one. And then is that a full moon out there? I mean, at first I thought they were in Newt's case, but then it's right there. So what is happening? But moving on, easily the coolest creature in the entire trailer is this giant kelp horse thing Newt is riding, hopefully in the Great Lake. This creature is what is known in the wizarding world as a Kelpie and is actually the muggle explanation for them for the Loch Ness Monster. Speaking of the wizarding world, I just wanna compliment the new logo they debuted in this trailer. I think it looks awesome, but just to clarify, that is for like the entire wizarding world, not just Fantastic Beasts, so don't like freak out that Voldemort's wand is in there. Number three, the supporting cast. We finally get our first in-person look at Lita Lestrange watching on a some other woman dances. It's a small look, but I'm sure she's going to have a massive role. We don't know much about her yet, but what we do know is that Newt used to date her, that he is covering up for something she did, which is the reason he was expelled, and that now she is engaged to his brother, Theseus. Theseus himself also makes an appearance doing some fancy wand work with Newt, and I have to say, I love this tiny detail that because he's a war hero, he holds his wand like a gun. I am a little surprised to see them working together though. I figured they would be a little more estranged. <laughs> see what I did there? Lita Lestrange, they were close with Newt, now is with 
You get it. Queenie gets about as short a look as Lita, but hey, good to see you. And then Tina just seems to be going through like a total emo phase. I mean, she's got the dark hair and the dark jacket. She's hanging out in dark alleys. And interestingly, they cut to her right as Dumbledore is saying, the time is coming, Newt, when we will all have to pick a side. Almost as if the editing is suggesting she will be picking the wrong side or not the same side as Newt or not the same side as Dumbledore or that, mm, there's something there. But definitely on Newt's side is Jacob, who just looks so happy to be back in the wizarding world. I cannot wait to just see how he gets his memory back and joins in on the adventure again. Our theory is of course that the rain at the end of the first Fantastic Beast movie only removes bad memories and of course he has great memories so they should come back. Just to remove bad memories, you know. Number two, Dumbledore, Grindelwald, and Newt. Grindelwald gets all of two appearances in the trailer. First, in front of some, what appears to be large court with a well-dressed woman. This woman, although it's hard to tell in this photo, is Vinda Rosier, which we can confirm by comparing to a different official press photo from Fantastic Beasts. Not sure if she'll sort of end up being the Bellatrix to Grindelwald's Voldemort, but Rosier definitely was a Death Eater name and part of Tom Riddle's original gang, AKA the Knights of Walpurgis, so I'm sure she's not good news. The other shot shows him looking a little bit deranged with like two wands pointing right at him, one of which looks kind of like Newt's. My guess is this is actually the start of the movie before he inevitably escapes and starts committing the crimes the movie is so named for. Newt, we learn though, is absolutely working for Dumbledore, which is awesome. It kind of makes him like, beta version Harry. No, no, Newt, even though I am the most powerful wizard in the world, I'm afraid it needs to be you who faces Grindelwald, the second most powerful wizard in this world. Has to be this way, has to be this way, for all you know, reasons and things. Don't worry, if you need me, I'll be over here doing a little interior decorating. Wizard feng shui isn't going to invent itself, you know. <laughs> the other thing that stands out to me though is, why are people questioning Dumbledore about Newt going to Paris? Like, why do they care? What business is it of theirs what Newt's doing? All I can really reason is that whatever Newt did to get expelled must have been really bad that international wizards care about his movements. Either way, I'm sure the answer to that mystery will be revealed to us. But speaking of revealing mysteries, number one, the Lestrange family tree. Now, you guys know me, there is nothing I like more than staring at poorly lit words stretched to their maximum pixels all day. But, totally worth it. What appears to be Dumbledore is staring at a brick wall of uh, what can only be described as beautiful mind notes, most of which are completely unreadable, but the important thing are these five faces. The top one reads Corvus Lestrange and has a picture of an odd bird beneath it, or odd until you realize that Corvus means raven, so it's probably a raven, although why it's on the family tree, I still don't know. Off to either side of him though, I thought at first was looking to be like two daughters on either side, but actually I think it's mother, mother, daughter, son. Meaning he had children with two women. The first one on the left is Lorena Kama and her daughter would be Lita Lestrange. Also after doing a little checking on IMDB, we can confirm that this guy is Yusuf Kama. So that would make him either Lita's half brother or uncle. But then on the right side of the family tree is a woman whose first name is indiscernible, but whose last name is Tremblay, and her son's name is, wait for it, Credence Barebone. What? And just above where it says Barebone is Lestrange, and what appears to be a first name, but sadly Dumbledore is blocking it. Ah, oh, this is so crazy, because obviously Barebone was an adopted surname from Mary Lou in the first movie, but now we know that he is actually a Lestrange. And not just that, but the like half-sibling of Lita Lestrange. But what's really important here is that in Half-Blood Prince, we learn that there is a Lestrange in Tom Riddle's year at Hogwarts. They have potions class together. And Voldemort was born in 1926, so that Lestrange kid must have been born the same year because they're in the same year, and Credence looks like he's going to have a girlfriend in this movie, which means that Credence could be the grandfather-in-law of Bellatrix Lestrange. And don't forget that we have a big working theory that his girlfriend, Maledictus, AKA the Snake Lady, might actually end up becoming Nagini, which could potentially mean that Nagini is actually the grandmother snake-in-law 
of Bellatrix. Ugh. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what was your favorite part of the new trailer? Did we miss anything? I know we didn't quite mention it yet, but my favorite part might have been when Dumbledore was just using the Deluminator because we totally called that it would show up. The socks are amazing. Excellent news. The very first ever Super Carlin Brother pins have finally been created. We got some mailed to us last week. They came out awesome. If you want to get in on these, we are going to be sending out for a year quarterly via our Patreon. So you end up getting one every three months, meaning if you want to get this one, you have until the end of March to sign up. So if you're interested, go check it out. Guys, as ever, thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to check out those Super Carlin Brothers pins, you can go to our Patreon right here. Or if you want to see how Maledictus might end up being Nagini, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.